This summer, we enter a new era of Star Wars. You mean the dawn of the Star Wars canon timeline podcast? Yeah, yeah, sure, that too. But I was obviously talking about the Acolyte. We've got to cover that on the Lorehounds. Oh, but the Star Wars Canon Timeline podcast is exactly at that point in the timeline, the end of the High Republic, 100 years before the prequel trilogy. We've got to cover it there. Why not both? Okay, deal. It's the first live action Star Wars outside the Skywalker saga. Nobody can miss this. Listeners, kick off your hot lore summer weekends with scene by scene breakdowns of the Acolyte, found in both the Star Wars Canon Timeline podcast and the Lorehounds Mother feed. And the Lorehounds Star Wars feed. Wherever you like to listen, a couple of days after each new episode is released. Welcome to the Star Wars Canon Timeline Podcast. And the Lorehound Star Wars Podcast. I'm John. And I'm Alicia. And today we're delving into the darkness of night, the fifth episode of the Disney Plus Star Wars series, The Acolyte. Listeners, for this crossover podcast series, we'll be following the Star Wars Canon Timeline Podcast spoiler rules. We will focus on the timeline in which the show is set and the eras leading into these events. Subscribers, we had a great conversation talking about events later in the timeline last week, and we'll do a season wrap-up to discuss that more as well. We have just a tiny bit of trailer-based speculation left this week, but we'll save that for a special section toward the end. See the show notes for timestamps. Stick around to the end of the episode to hear what the community made of this episode and programming notes for what's coming up next on the Lorehounds Network. You'll find links to all of our affiliates, the Discord server, and more in the show notes. And never fear, we'll talk about the Knights of Ren this episode as well. Uh, For the record, this conversation was recorded June 27th, 2024, and spoilers for the current episode start now. So, John, what did you think of this episode? I almost shat my pants when I heard the Kylo Ren motif. Uh, Theme song, yeah. Boy, oh boy, I was I was so happy with this episode. I still think, and I know we had a, a little teaser of a debate on, on the Discord last night. I still think that this was a half an episode that when mm-hmm. combined with the other episode turned two good episodes into a great episode. I, and I disagree on that because I think that if we had combined them, well, first of all, Kalnaka's death would have meant nothing like just he would have gotten his death would have gotten no respect and I also think it would have undermined all the reveals and deaths of this week as well I think we needed that week in between to like sit with it and speculate I don't I don't think so I think Kalnaka's death already was not going to be that meaningful because we just we never met the character before right the first time we meet him he's dead I mean, I, mean I, I guess we had the flashback, but what did he yeah. do in that flashback? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, we've seen him hanging out in the jungle and, and right. kindly not breaking people's necks who stroll right. into his territory. Um, but I just, yeah, I, I, I stand by that I think that this was the best thing. I like a week to be like, ooh, what's going to happen next? Because I think this episode, it was about the same length as last episode, but it felt so packed. So much happened. And I think it would have felt too long and and yeah it would have just completely washed out the first half if they were together it might be because we're doing house of the dragon at the same time and those are generally hour-long episodes in right which a lot of the action happens towards the end of the episode mm-hmm. and and that's working for me really well and so but i to do me, think yeah i and i get that they're different i think types house of, of the shows. dragon is slower though i mean i think the episodes unfold more slowly in that yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But but I didn't think that day, I didn't think that episode four day moved very quickly at all. I thought that that was a lot of setup. And then you have that setup and then a whole episode of fights and then reveals. I think that that's great. I think that's that's a perfect episode of television for me. Like, I, I, I think I would have been and and can I steal a piece of feedback from later? Sure. There's 
a piece of feedback we got in the Discord that really spoke to how I felt and did a really good job of summarizing it. And I'm going to try to find it now while I'm talking, but my stalling is okay. taking too long because we had so much good conversation in the Discord. <laughs> Um, yeah, I actually didn't copy anything from the Discord except for the one that Athena um, tagged me on. So feel free to pull in anything else. Okay, so the piece of feedback I'm referring to is from Eon on our Discord. And Eon said, great episode, but it just confirms that it and the previous episodes should have been one great episode. There was no reason to split. It would have been one of the be one of the episodes of the year for any show. I mean, okay, agree to disagree on this. All right, fair enough. We don't have to belabor it. And and I'm yeah. not going to go the whole episode being like, see, this should have been one episode. I just wanted to say <laughs> that up front. Like, I, I really feel passionately that this should have been one episode. In okay. the era of streaming, you don't have to have same no, size episodes. No, you don't have to. But I don't think that was the reason personally. And I'm glad it's not for reasons not having to do with length. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's enough for me on that one. Anyway. I was shocked by how much I liked the reveal of Manny Jacinta mm -hmm. as as Darth as mm -hmm. as we were saying. Mm -hmm. Darth Thief is a very scary villain, and Manny playing him is very cool because he's funny. He's right. darkly funny, right? And I think that he has perhaps the best humor of any villain in Star Wars. And I love mm. a funny villain. Mm -hmm. I love one that doesn't take himself so seriously and is just like a pure nihilist. And that's what Manny Jacinta's character seems to be, this unnamed Sith. Or right. is he a Sith? That's yeah. another question. Sith? Question mark. Right. I, I just thought it was incredible. I thought the choreography was amazing. Mm -hmm. I thought they did a really good job faking us out by bringing around a lot of unnamed Jedi, thinking like, right. okay, these are the people who are going to kill. And then they were like, oh, actually, Jekki and Yord, bye. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think that's that's something that the show has done kind of well. And also with the fact that they did the Chimera reveal this episode, the, you know, uh, the Jedi who have died and stuff that have died so mm -hmm. far. Anytime we expect something to happen, then it's going to happen pretty much immediately. And then it becomes like, well, that, guess what? That's not the real mystery. The real mystery is not that it's Chimere. The real mystery is, yeah, why does Chimere care about these girls? What is uh, his real deal? Why is he doing this? Why is he targeting these Jedi? Right. And does he have a master, et cetera? Right. Mm -hmm. the, the, I love that kind of subversion of expectations in shows. And, and that, that phrase has become so cursed since mm -hmm. the Game of Thrones era. But when it's done well, it's really good. And, you know, something that Severance did really well and why people praise it so much is that they set up all these mysteries, but they would knock them down like dominoes. And then the next episode, there'd be a new mystery. And, you'd, you you know, it layered these mysteries in a way where it felt like, OK, I might have thought I knew where the show was going, but I absolutely did not. And I think that this show is doing a very similar thing. They set you up with a whole Kill Bill scenario thinking that, OK, well, it's going to be about two episodes per kill, and then that's going to be the season. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely not that, right? You, you know, having having May have this doubt of maybe I'll just surrender myself to the Jedi, having Osha be captured by the big bad, or perhaps the little bad, we don't even know. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that these are such brilliant plot twists. And, and I'm shocked that Soul is still alive. That's the other thing I wanted to say. Uh. Is as soon as he gave the Ned Stark line of we'll talk later about this important... Yeah piece of backwards backstory um i thought he was dead in this fight but he wasn't and that's super impressive but regardless i mean it's impressive it shows his prowess as because that's the thing that this episode did well is these deaths you know of course yeah we expected the red shirts and they were just wiped out like in the opening of the episode and so that the deaths that happened after that were shocking and they hit hard and they set real stakes and so also by having these characters die then we can also sit, be like wow soul is he's of a different caliber, mm -hmm. which he should be. That right, just shows the right. scaling. He is the master where Yord is just barely out of Padawan status and Jackie not even, she will never be a full Jedi. I um, know. It's so <laughs> sad. It's so sad. Can I also say, I don't think that Soul is convinced that that's Osha. I think he is 
I, because Soul, we we know is very good at getting into the minds of people. No, I think he, he the way he I just rewatched it before we recorded, and the way he was looking at her at the end, I think he knows it's May. Yeah, I think so too. And even if he didn't, I think they get back to Coruscant. Like, what's her plan? The, the minute mm-hmm. she takes off, because we saw that she didn't exchange like actual outfits with Osha. She just exchanged the, the she just put on like, the overcoat, mm-hmm. the silly, the silly civilian thing. And so I'm like, what Padawan is going to do laundry and be like, hey, Master Soul, your guest had this like really ominous black garb in the laundry chute. <laughs> <laughs> Her hamper was filled with all these yeah. very Sith like outfits. And, and I just I don't know about well, this I kid. Think- I think Basil's going to be the one to out her with the head of, since he has um, Pip's head and she's like going to not know what to do with it. I don't know if she took Pip with her or if the body of Pip is still with Osha, but, Mm. um, but yeah, she's not going. And you know, that's Basil's been paying attention to Pip since the moment he saw him. So that's going to out her. But then the question is what does Sol do about it? I think that Sol knows it's May. But uh-huh. because he promised to tell Osha what, what what happened, I think he's gonna pretend that it's the same, you know, that that it is Osha. He's gonna pretend yeah. that he thinks it's Osha, and he's going to tell his side of the story while she's listening. Hmm. And maybe yeah. the way he tells his side of the story, she'll realize that he was not as culpable as the other ones and that he did his best. And yeah, so it will I, challenge yeah. her view of the of the Jedi. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think, you know, the whole we thought he was going to die because he said, I'm going to tell you when we get back to the ship. And <laughs> the in the truth of the matter is it, he didn't get a chance to tell her because even, you know, he wanted to tell her and then May knocks him out at the end of this episode. Um, and so I think that even though he didn't die, it's going to be too late because now we've got Osha is going to hear Chimere's side of the story, which mm-hmm. I can't wait to hear. Yeah, and and. You know, I just finished Era 2 of The High Republic, by the way, last night. Mm-hmm. And the the whole motivation of the mother of Alicia. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry to besmirch a variation on your name. Um, <laughs> but the whole motivation of her was she was passed over in favor of her sister, right? Right. So for anyone who doesn't know, she is the leader of this path of the open hand basically that we talked about which ends up becoming the Nihil which we'll talk about more this episode because we're going to talk about other marauding pirate types cool yeah so so my my point with that is just Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's a similar backstory to Chimere is that he was passed over in favor of another kid or something like that Mm -hmm. Uh, or or he knew somebody maybe his best friend was taken by the Jedi and he was just like why do I, ha- maybe he was just drawn to the dark side and, and he was, why do I have to adhere to your religion? Mm. Because, because that's a, an interesting conversation that I think Star Wars is starting to have is, are the Jedi a cult? Right. And I think that that's an interesting thing that the High Republic era in general is having the, as this overarching theme because it introduces anti-force cults. Mm-hmm. But right. or rather not anti-force, but anti-use of the force. Cults. Right. And so the question is, is the Jedi, are the Jedi a an alternative viewpoint cult? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is everything's from from a different perspective. I can see why, for instance, the witch's coven in this show looks at the Jedi and says, Why do you get to be the ones who say how the force is used or the threat or whatever you want to call it? You know, why do right. you get to be the ones who make the rules um, if your rules are that my way is wrong? It's a good question. It's a good yeah. question. And, and uh, yeah, I, and that's what, say, Darth, that's what Darth Teeth asks, asks this episode right. as well. <laughs> right. I mean, I would say that the Jedi don't kill people. Like, that's... Right. You know, the, their right. use of... I, I think that it's fine to use the light side in whatever way you want. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and I think the Jedi should be more open to alternate uses of the light side. Right. But the dark side clearly relies on pain, relies on anger, relies on pain. Did I say pain twice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But also what we are constantly being told from legends, but also in the modern era of Star Wars, is that the important thing is balance. You know, that yin-yang symbol that we keep seeing. And it, balance necessitates that there is also darkness. Like, it's like uh, mm-hmm. later in this episode... Um, uh, Chimere says to Saul, 
Saul says, you know, oh, he's twisted by darkness. And Chimera says, isn't it better that I embrace my darkness? What have you done with yours? You know, it's not that Saul mm. doesn't have it. It's he's repressing it. And what dangers does that lead to? And I'm not advocating for the murderous, maybe Sith, of course. But I'm just saying it's interesting to see their perspective. Yeah, I want to talk about Yoda, but not now. In our okay. in our next spoiler cast, I want to talk about Yoda and some uh What happens era. with him later? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. want to talk about I want to talk about stuff that happens. Can I say the Clone Wars? Can I refer sure. to the Clone Wars? I, I think mean, so. there's yeah, we, I've talked a lot about the fact there's a TV show called The Clone Wars that a lot of lore comes from. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, enough of my thoughts. I feel like I've monopolized this hot take <laughs> section. So well, what, what I've were been your talking thoughts? Too. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you, except on our one notable difference. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think this is some of the best fight choreo we've seen in all of Star Wars. It was just absolutely thrilling. Uh, yeah, the deaths hit hard, like I said. Uh, and we finally got to see that new type of lightsaber that uh, Leslie Headland was teasing. So we'll talk about that later, too. What what was the new type of lightsaber? When um, Darth Teeth pulled the shorter lightsaber out of the longer lightsaber, it's like oh, sheathed okay. inside each other. Understood. Like a nesting doll Understood. situation. Very cool. Um, but yeah, before we get into the episode breakdown proper, we did want to talk about a piece of feedback. Uh, we wanted to put it here up front to talk about it separately. Um. You'll see why. It's it's about uh, the way that this crossover podcast is being run. So we'll get to the rest of the feedback at the end. Um, but I guess I guess I better read this one because it's about yeah, me. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so Annie said, uh, sent us an email and said, Dear Lower Hounds, I'm a big fan of your work and very happy that Alicia has finally joined the team. But I'm really struggling to get your Acolyte coverage. I would consider myself a semi-casual Star Wars fan, having watched all the movies all the live action TV shows, and a little bit of the animation. But I feel like this podcast is not being made for people like me, and I'm on the verge of noping out. The main reason is this, in my opinion, bizarre spoiler policy, not linking the current series to the mainstream Star Wars content, which really defeats the point of listening to a Lorehounds podcast, and the constant allusions to future stuff is just frustrating to listen to. I understand that this came out of Alicia's timeline podcast policy, but it really begs this question, who is this for? I think the overlapping Venn diagram of people who are deep into the High Republic timeline who have never watched the movies or shows and therefore could be spoiled is practically non-existent. Do you really expect people to begin their Star Wars fandom by skipping the movies slash TV and starting with a podcast or novels? I'm just going to jump in real quick and say, no, no, no. It's a lot of misunderstanding there, but continuing to the last paragraph. As someone who will never read the books or get that invested in the extended lore, 80% of the stuff you guys talk about goes over my head. Unless you change your spoiler policy or at the very least include a spoil lore section at the end for each podcast, I will assume it is just meant for the super hardcore Star Wars fans who could get spoiled somehow, not people like me, best Annie. So, yeah, I sent, I sent a long email, um, but yeah, John, uh, I'm going to give you a chance to respond as the, <laughs> as, as, as an OG as the person who's hound. not, you know, a personally addressed. Right. <laughs> right. Somebody who's, who's right. not fully attached to the Canon timeline podcast. Uh, I want to just say at first, if we did not do this crossover, we definitely would not have covered the show just because of how busy we are right now with house of the dragon and Dr. Who and, and um, the bear, the boys, we probably would have covered the boys uh, mm-hmm. because I think David was not that interested in covering this series. Uh, and to, to be honest, I, I struggled at first with complying with the policy because I'm mm-hmm. so used to just freely referencing right. other stuff in the timeline. But I think it's a really, but first of all, Alicia, I want to say I admire your project and I think that it's a very unique way to look at Star Wars and it's something that's not been done before, to my knowledge, which is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so, I mean, about the spoiler policy in general, we we did uh, do an in-depth spoiler rep, but, um, I, you know, that was obviously just for subscribers. So to summarize for everybody else, just one of the reasons why I'm doing this on the Canon Timeline podcast is not just to, and this is, by the way, the Canon Timeline podcast, and and thus also this aspect, this part of it, is meant for 
new fans as well, older fans who want to like see how everything connects, but also brand new fans, which is why I spend a lot of time um, explaining the lore in the depth that I do. Um, but just to summarize why the spoiler policy is it's kind of just to force us to look at the story from the perspective of the people who are living it, you know, so from Saul's perspective, who doesn't know what's going to happen in a hundred years. And of course we cheat all the time with like little offhand comments about that. And, um, uh, hopefully we try to make them as clear as possible in terms of, you know, if there's a, a force, uh, conception, I, you either know what that is or you don't, and you'll find out. Um, yeah, that's, that's just, uh, about the spoiler policy aspect of it. I'm really sorry that that's frustrating, um, frustrating you, Annie. And, uh, you know, for other people, um, I hope it's not the same. If it is, please let me know. I know that I've also heard feedback from people who are, uh, who are enjoying the lore dumps because, you know, they, they want to learn more lore. Um, and uh, I'm glad also that I did, for instance, like I did the, a deep dive on cortosis, uh, the material used in Jedi jails at, at the fir- with the first episode. And that ended up being super relevant for this mm-hmm. episode. You know, that's, that's the material that was shorting out the lightsabers. We'll talk about that more. But um, I, I, you know, I do the lore dumps for a reason. It's, it's to try to help you understand this episode more. And um, yeah, if anyone else has feedback about whether you think we're achieving the right balance with that, I'd love to hear it. Perfectly balanced. <laughs> that's that's the light and the dark side. Uh, yeah, and I'll say I, I I suggested to aid in in your comfort that we will eventually talk about things. Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps we on the season wrap up, we can have a right. section where we talk about future timeline events. Right. I think that would be good. And and I also think this is an era that is largely. Like th- this is a whole project. The High Republic project is a whole thing that Lucasfilm is doing. And I actually, mm-hmm. at first, I was really skeptical about it. And the more I read it, the more I think it's interesting. And it and it it has some of the better written characters in the Star Wars, I would say, just from what I've read so far, which is just a few books. And I I think it's worth talking about these things on a podcast. Now, one thing that I took from that email was we could do a better job of explaining High Republic concepts that we right say in passing. So that is something that we will definitely take into account and we will be more cognizant of. I know, Alicia, you already explained who the mother is and who the path of the open hand is when I referenced that before. So I I think two things that we'll do, we'll definitely explain things that are High Republic exclusive, book exclusive to people who are not interested in reading those books. And we will eventually have a spoiler uh, discussion on the season wrap. Now, I think we'll have a deeper spoiler discussion on the subscriber exclusive conversation but we can at least have some basic conversations about skywalkers and other entities <laughs> right no we'll we'll figure out the details but we yeah we want to make uh make it the best for everyone um and uh, you know and i will also continue to refer to episodes in the canon padawan timeline podcast because you know i specifically did that to build up to this series so um, I, we are, we're not going to spend a bunch of time telling you about the rule of two when we've already talked about it in depth twice. So, right. Uh, right. Do check that out so in the show notes on the Canon timeline. You can find a blog post that lays out all the episodes and you can just like do a control F and search for different concepts and it'll tell you when we talked about different things. All right. Well, I think, I think that about says it. And we do appreciate the feedback, Annie, you know, mm-hmm. the, you know, we, we make this show for everyone's enjoyment, and I hope people are enjoying it. And if there's things that you like or don't like, then feel free to write in. Yeah. No, it's all about striking the right balance. Because, of course, you know, for some people, it might be maybe the weird force users last week was too much. But other people specifically requested that. So then it's like, well, where do yeah. we find? And then I, I end up going on the line of, like, what would I want as a listener? And, yeah, of yeah. course, for me personally, I'm going to lean toward lore. Well, That's what drew is, me to the lore hounds in the first place. <laughs> if you'll notice, if you look down at your podcast player right now, right, <laughs> there's a fast forward button. Uh-huh. <laughs> if, you, if you end up stuck on the lore and you're like, I just can't do this right now. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's okay. You can skip. We forget Anything you. that doesn't interest you. But shall we get into the episode? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So this week's episode, episode five, is titled Night, which everybody saw coming. <laughs> 
I know. Um, I could have I could have written that title myself in my sleep. <laughs> Do you think next week's going to be free will to mirror the destiny of uh, episode three? Oh, good question. I don't know. I don't know if we're getting the mirror of that yet. Yeah, maybe we maybe will. We'll that, it, it would make sense if we get like a different perspective. It, if we get two different perspectives, uh, may, I, I feel like they want the one word title, so maybe choice, something like that. Right. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe Free Will will be episode seven. We'll see. Oh. Yeah. But so for this week, the credited writers were Cor Adana, who also was a writer last week, and Cameron Squires, who also worked in the WandaVision writing room and also on Final Space and a show I haven't watched called Agent Elvis. Mm. And the director was Alex Garcia Lopez, same director as last week. Nice. So we begin with a red shirt massacre. Osha comes to after having been thrown aside by the masked master in the last episode. She's searching for her droid as we see the Kel Dor, who is definitely not Plo Koon, go down to the man with the red lightsaber. The spare Jedi are quickly dispatched. Osha trips over a dead Jedi in the red dust and sees eight trails left by the force-pushed Jedi. Darth Teeth wounds and corners Yord, and Osha distracts him by firing her blaster set to stun, but the shot just dissipates when it reaches the master. But Osha is his new target, and he chases her through the jungle, throwing his saber at her like a boomerang, but Saul steps in to block it. Saul orders Yord and Osha back to the ship while he faces the masked man. So, yeah, first of all, looking for droid, uh, Pip the droid first is very relatable. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I I saw some people saying Pip's was the saddest death until we realized that Basil found his head. Yeah, I don't think he's dead. No, no. But he, it, it still was meaningful when she's like, I love you, Pip. I love and you. She, and that yeah. was such a smart way to, um, that was such a smart way to to get Chimere. I, I, I can't decide right. what I want to call him. That's right. the problem. To get Chimere attacked by the, uh, the bugs. They, of course, said that if they were like, Oh, interesting. It went right for the lightsaber. It must be attracted to light. <laughs> it was, right. I was like, boy, that is Chekhov's bug. <laughs> yeah but, no i mean they were definitely setting that up especially knowing that there was supposed to be an episode with a predator theme mm-hmm. and i i also want to say you said the red light ma- uh, the red shirt massacre i want to explain mm-hmm. if people aren't trekkies or don't right. know the okay. trek stuff red shirts are in explain uh, tell me if i'm wrong because i mm-hmm. am not really a trekkie i've only watched some of it well, uh, the red shirts are generally if, if a character is going to die, if an unnamed character or a side character is going to die on a Star Trek episode, they're usually wearing a red shirt. Yeah, I mean, because it's just basically, you know, your shirt colors are about your ranks and the red shirts mm-hmm. are low ranking people who barely get named, if that. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get attached to any red yeah. shirts. But, but but yeah, as soon as we yeah. had unnamed Jedi, I was like, yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> but they named they named the Kaldor. It's Ithiapan, I'll have you know. But that's just basically so that people will be like, no, it's not Plo Koon, Stop. There's other. There's more I of know. his species. <laughs> somebody somebody said on Reddit that he basically or she was it it was a woman. I don't know this this uh, Plo Koon look alike. Okay, this Plo Koon look alike basically uh-huh. looked at the camera and said, "I'm not Plo Koon. Let yeah. let it let it be. I'm not Plo Koon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I got stabbed. I love that that was the one they showed getting stabbed right through the gut. <laughs> right. Right. Um and the the red dust on the planet. So I was I was paying a lot of attention to that because they've shown people tripping into it several times. And at first I thought it was on the ground because there's like a black layer over it and it was reminding me of that planet Crate that we see in the last Jedi. Uh. Uh, which by the way Crate exists in this point in the timeline. It's just desolate and uninhabited. Literal mm-hmm. salted earth. <laughs> And so I was thinking, like, this must have iron soil because red equals iron. But then on my rewatch, I noticed at the beginning of the episode, especially, you notice that the red stuff's actually falling from the trees. So I'm like, is this something related to the bugs or maybe the trees themselves? And mm-hmm. um, I don't know if, they, if they're showing us this just because it looks pretty or if there's something else going on. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like we're not done with this planet. Especially because we have May and Chimere here. Right. Yeah, I don't know if they're all going to leave or stick around. I don't know. I Also, it's so weird that, like, Chimere's, like, in her ear, like, hello, 
and what do I do with you? You know, like, mm-hmm. like you know, you give her some personal space, buddy. Yeah, he feels like he knows her because he knows his sis- her sister. I don't like him lording over her there. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, he's like, you're already mine because I bought May and you're a package deal. Mm. I don't know. I wonder, I keep having the idea or keep getting hints that he's somehow connected to their coven, but how could that be? I don't know. Yeah. But also, why does he care or what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I was, I was hoping that it would be Mother Coral or another character connected to. Mm-hmm. Maybe Mother the, Coral is his, his master. Hmm. But my 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 point with that is just I I was so impressed by Manny Jacinta's performance that it didn't matter to me like it and that's the sign of a good performance and good writing is that I you know even though it was predictable who was behind the mask it felt mm-hmm. like a cool reveal anyway because it was just so well done yeah no he I mean he was brilliant and. Especially there's this one moment where he dips into when May first sees him and is like, oh, my God. And he's like, he does that derpy Jason Mendoza, which is the character from The Good Place uh, thing where he's like, hello. And then he goes back to you really didn't know it was me. Um, Yeah, yeah, the hello almost gave me Obi-Wan, too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hello. (laughs) Yeah, uh, it's funny to watch the internet. Like ev- the internet is just freaking out over him because uh, I wrote in the notes here: "Move over, Damon. The internet has a new toxic boyfriend." <laughs> <laughs> but, but basically, I mean, obviously, I, I call him Darth Thirst now. Ever since the reveal of the arms, the arms. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I know I saw I saw all the discourse on that. Somebody said <laughs> it's weird that they did a whole episode just on his arms. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's because it's also like. We're mad at him because he killed our faves, but we're also like, he's charming despite being, you know, if evil, why hot? Also, it it goes back to. (laughs) But I love that Uh, people kept asking last week, like, what is in that giant backpack that he's carrying around? And now we know it was a costume change. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that it's a lot of gear, quite honestly, Mm -hmm. a lot of gear. Yeah. So I, I think my theory, am I allowed to talk about my theories yet or are we doing that in the next scene? No, sure. Go ahead. My theory is that he is not a true Sith. Right. But he, as as a smuggler who was mm-hmm. force sensitive, he came across ancient Sith teachings, whether in holocrons right. or writings. Or they he, were in that structure in Brendock. Mm, that was my interesting. theory. Interesting. Anyway, he, he came across them in some way and was like, I like the, I like the right. jibe of this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the cut of their jib. Yeah. Yeah. I like the cut of their jib. That's the phrase I'm looking for. Uh, Let's, uh, yeah, you might call me Sith, but he never says he's Sith. He says, you might know me as Sith. Exactly. And and I think that that was a very, it felt very Aes Sedai, right? Like I'm going to, I'm going to phrase my sentences to not be a lie. Right. But I do also wonder, so he's obviously very well trained with a lightsaber. Um, So who did he learn that from? Because that's been called out several times, at least when May does it. They're like, May looks like she's been trained by a Jedi. But then this episode, they're like, you trained May. So he's not a Jedi known to the Order, obviously, Mm -hmm. unless somehow this group doesn't know that for some reason because the Order is so big or something. But no, I don't think he is. I think that there's another Jedi who has trained him. Mm -hmm. Or, again, with the holocron things, we know that Jedi sometimes record training exercises with holocrons. And I know that that's not... The same mm. thing is getting personal training, but yeah, no, but that would make sense. But I think he could definitely learn the forms from that. At yeah, least. it was giving me Jedi game flashbacks. I wish we could do this in Jedi game where he did the double impaling with the second one with the force pool. Hmm. Yeah, that was cool. And and there's something that Yord says that stuck out to me that said self taught to me, which mm-hmm. was he goes he doesn't follow the rules of combat, right. And and to me, you know, somebody who self-taught himself the piano mm-hmm. and a lot of the guitar, sometimes I had these chord structures that I would I would play music with a classically trained person and yeah. they would say, why are you putting your hands that way? And I'd be mm-hmm. like, because that's how I learned to play it. And, right. and it sounded good. So I kept doing it. Right. And uh, I, I just think that that's 
a, a marker of being self-taught is not following the canon. Right. Or like Wilders in uh, The Wheel of Time. Am I allowed right. to say that? <laughs> right. Um, that makes him more dangerous, too. Mm-hmm. The, the fact that he's unpredictable. But also, I mean, Soul is being realistic that these are, that this is somebody they don't know and he could do anything. Whereas mm-hmm. Yord, being the newly knighted Jedi who doesn't who who had, try, had to try so hard to pass his test, mm-hmm. he's like, I know the forms. He's right. so attached to the forms that he can't go up against somebody that he doesn't right. know. He's only trained to fight another Jedi, basically. Well, it's and yeah, what and it's that? it's his own um, personality too. That he's just he's so such a rule follower. He cannot fathom why others would would not do that. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> but I have a question about this helmet and an armband that he's wearing. So as I alluded to before, it seems to be made of cortosis. And so we talked about cortosis in the first episode uh, breakdown for this series. But just as a little refresh, basically, it is a metal substance that dissipates energy. So when you blast it, like uh, like we get at one point, Osha blasts him and the charge just dissipates. Um, or it can short out lightsabers as well, which is what we see happening over and over whenever the lightsabers touch his helmet or his armband. Um, that's a pretty rare and special metal. So I'm wondering where he got it. Probably Planet X. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just read that part. So I'm, uh, the other thing I want to say is when Osha shot him, I mm-hmm. love the way that, I love the way that he looks at her. He's like, huh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't yeah. even phased by it, but he was he was amused by it. And that was such a funny dark side moment. Like that's why I really like him. He's my favorite dark side user. Yeah. In a long time. Maybe uh no, nah, Darth Vader. Darth Vader is still the coolest villain. But he's think, he's up yeah. there. He's really cool. He's he's top three with Maul also. Yeah, I do like, well, I like animated mall. I think movie mall is boring. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Okay, so another thing about this helmet that's weird because it's not in canon, at least, is that apparently it has brainwave blocking properties, which I have some questions about. So first of all, I have to give a shout out to Jean because I knew he was going to bring up Magneto and it's immediately what I thought of, too, when we found out he's wearing it so that that Saul can't read his mind. (laughs) Right, right. But also, yeah, cortosis has not been before said to do, to do that. But I'm wondering if um, someone was wondering if it's because you need eye contact to do it, or the other thing is is like our brain waves energy, so it blocks that right. somehow. Good question. Good question. See, I I didn't remember you talking about cortosis because you say mm-hmm. so much lore that I just can't keep it mm-hmm. all in my head. And uh, I also, again, we're covering like three shows right now, and I just cannot keep all the lore in my head at all times. And I was like, did he just break their lightsabers? Like, are they going to (laughs) like to me? I thought for at first, like they were going to have to take their kyber crystals and build a new lightsaber. He shorted out the circuits. But I I think that your explanation seems a lot more reasonable because to me, I thought what was going to happen was somebody who was going to be blocking and it was just gonna, their lightsaber was going to cut out and they were going to get stabbed. Oh, yeah. No, only when they hit his helmet. And, but it's only short term because you see the lightsaber will sputter right. back on after a moment. I see. Huh. To me, I was like, oh, is this just a broken lightsaber now that's going to come in and out? Yeah. Okay. Nope. <laughs> anyway, I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying. So I'd have an I'm just saying yeah, that was yeah, my yeah. thought process. Mm hmm. I was so engrossed in what I was watching that I could not stop to think about what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to explain it, but otherwise it's a nice Easter egg. Yeah, yeah. All right, so then the, the action moves on, and Basil is with Yord and Osha for a hot second before Basil wanders off into the jungle again. And Yord and Osha bicker about Yord and his lightsaber fetish, about her wanting to return to the fight, and him wanting to follow orders. She reminds him and the audience that the giant umber moths are drawn to attack sources of light, and Yord finally puts his lightsaber away. Elsewhere in the forest, Sol faces the Master and the two duel until the Master slips away. Meanwhile, May leaves Kalnaka's 
Hut with his lightsaber and is attacked by Jackie. And the two have an awesome fight that ends with May in cuffs and Jackie with two green lightsabers. And now Jackie is fighting the master with both lightsabers, but one of them short circuits when it makes contact with his cortosis helmet and armband. And the master slices through the saber with his and Jackie drops it and runs down to one saber. But the master is no longer interested in her and he takes off in pursuit of the handcuffed May who has slipped away during the distraction. What a shame that they killed Jackie. She was cool yeah. effortlessly. And yeah, yeah, it was very sad. Yeah, I also had to wonder, like, is it was it weird for Jackie to attack May when she apparently had a crush on Osha and she's attacking her, someone who looks identical? I don't think so. I mean, it was somebody who tried to kill the person that she had a crush on, right? Well, did, she, did May try to kill Osha? Maybe she thinks Originally, so. I mean, she knows about the fire. Yeah, I still don't know if that's what we think it was. But anyway. And, and she killed Master Torben. Like, she knows right, that she's right. killed Right, right. No, she Jedi. killed Indara and she killed Torben. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, or at least, yeah, got him to drink poison. Um, she doesn't know that Torben took it willingly out of guilt. Um, yeah. I was sad, though, that Jackie and Osha didn't get a last moment together after their bonding. Yeah. Now they never will. They're yeah, sad. now they never will. So I, I, I have to, though, compliment Daphne Keen. I, I didn't mm-hmm. recognize her. I, I recognized her with the voice. Mm-hmm. But they, first of all, makeup department, amazing job. I thought that she right. looked very unique. Uh, and the performance was really subtle and and felt natural in the Star Wars universe. And sometimes these people who have played big characters like, uh, you know, being in his dark materials, being in Logan, it's hard for them to go to different universes with that. Right. Felt felt very natural to me. I could see her in anything. Very versatile actor. Yeah. No, yeah, she's she's great. Yeah, no, I've seen her in three major things and she just kills it every time. Cuz I mean, I guess I would say there they are three very different actors, you know, when she's X23, we saw a bit of that X23 in her fighting this time, but mm-hmm. uh Jackie's a uh, Jackie's a much more measured character. Jackie. Jackie. I, that's it's one of the last <laughs> times I could do it. You got to give it to me. Yeah. Jackie. All yours. <laughs> can you, can you do the Kiwi one for me one more time? That that made me laugh Jiki. a lot. Jiki. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was questioning at first why May took Kalnaka's lightsaber this time, but then I thought about it, and I think that it's because before, she's no longer trying to... And it's funny that um, Chimere, Mr. I don't want any rules, is setting rules for May, but that just goes to show you everyone's a hypocrite. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that May is like, I'm done with the master. I'm not playing this, you know, whatever the game is with winning a lightsaber without, uh, you know, whatever the rules are. And so she just takes it to defend herself because mm-hmm. she's like, I'm going outside where, where a bunch of people want to kill me. Right. Right. Yeah. I uh, and and it's a it's really a shame that she doesn't have the opportunity to surrender herself. Right. Mm hmm. Because I, I think she would have. I think she was ready to just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that we should be um, suspicious of Basil or Basil? Because he keeps leaving the people he's supposed to be guiding. Isn't that kind of weird that every Yord's constantly like, where's Basil now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Basil is, is definitely a little bit sus on my list. A mm. little bit. Everyone's on the sus meter somewhere on this show. Right. Do you think um, Chimere, when he said Sol should recognize him, was that just from their meeting on Olega? Or do you think there's another reason he thinks Sol should recognize him? Uh, good, good question. The other thing is we still have that cloaked person on uh, during the Ascendance. Mm. Ascension, rather. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that it's possible that Chimere was there. Maybe he was, you know, they had to have May and Osha some way. Yeah. Um, what if I, so he's you think, like, like Osha, can he I am slow, your father. Can he slow his aging? Because Chimere yeah, looks know. like he's in his 30s, and that would make him a teenager then. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think we've seen Sith live a pretty long time. Yeah, I mean, there are, in non-humans, there yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Force users can live longer. But even humans, I think we've seen some live pretty, 
pretty long. Hmm. Yeah, Maybe like a, a lot of them go down in combat. <laughs> it's hard to think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is hard to judge. Um, I have to give Yord his due, in in the moment before we discuss his death. Um, first of all, like I, I was when a total flip flop in this episode from like, oh, look at Yord ref- refusing to turn off his lightsaber because he's a know it all dick. Uh, but now his dickishness really hits different after his death. And I think I'm going to find him really endearing on rewatches. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just as Yord was getting likable, mm-hmm. he was killed. And, and that was definitely on purpose. Like we had this right. natural aversion to this mansplaining, you know, cocky guy right. who clearly was very insecure about his abilities, uh, who was very obsessed with his physical appearance, clearly. Right. He never had a hair out of place. He was Mm -hmm. ripped and he was just very... Steaming his robes in the hall. Sure. Right. He's just very (laughs) obsessed with appearances and and it just made us be annoyed with him. And I think that is a little bit of social commentary of like, we're much more concerned with the social mannerisms of people Mm. than their outward actions. Whereas I don't think he ever took an action that was bad or mean or anything like that. I think we get a little too hung up on being nice instead of kind. And... Yord mm-hmm. was kind when he needed to be kind. I mean, the way he talked to Osha about her trauma was kind, even even if he's not always nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I And I also have to give him credit. Like, not only did he tell us about the Darth Teeth not following the rules of combat, as you mentioned, but mm-hmm. um, he also pointed out this. He said... So we had this thing where the helmet apparently is blocking Sol from Jedi mind tricking Chimere, which I don't think he would be able to do anyway because Chimere is too intelligent. But anyway, Mm -hmm. um, but then Yord says that Chimere was mind controlling him. But the way he says it, he says um, he gets into your head and stays there, which we didn't see that Mm -hmm. happen this episode. So it makes me question, is this something that happened before? Like when he was g- guarding the shop on Olega, where they met him in the That's apothecary a good question. shop. That's a good question. I uh, I don't know. I I, I want to know more now. Give me a flashback to Yord. Yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe we will. Um, and and of course, Osha says my mom used to be able to do that. So tying it back to the witches again. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. I wonder if. May has a brand somewhere else besides her head. Hmm. May or Osha? No, I mean, I mean May because she was under Chimere's teaching. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Or does Chimere have a, a spiral somewhere we're going to see? It's actually on his right butt cheek. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. You can show us. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, speaking of hiding your cheeks, he says to Saul, what master hides? Oh, sorry. Saul says to him, what master hides his face from his pupil? And Saul and uh, Chimera says to Saul, you tell me. So he's got the dirt on Saul because he's also later prodding Osha. Like Saul's not telling you stuff, which Saul, to be Mm -hmm. fair, Saul already said, I got something I'm going to tell you later. Yeah. (laughs) Next time we meet, (laughs) we'll talk about your mother. Oh my God. That has given me so much anxiety. (laughs) <laughs> and I still have it because we don't know what's <laughs> going to happen next between him and May. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Osha rightfully gets called out later for being unable to defend herself. And we saw that when she was a kid, too. Um, and she doesn't seem to be. She's got, like got her little stunner blaster and that's like her only weapon. But she still keeps wanting to charge back into the fight. So I guess she's not as fearful as I might have thought, by just based on the way she hides behind her sister in, in the flashbacks. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I do like later when she's like, well, you never could block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then in contrast, uh, Chimere is, I thought it was really effective the way when May is running through the woods and he's pursuing her and then the camera just like does extreme close-ups of the mask and we just hear his voice saying, coward, you are going to betray me. Just a very like ominous, looming presence like you can't get away from him. Yep, yep. He he is scary. That's that's what makes him such a good villain is that he's both scary and funny at various yeah. times. 
and yeah. he and it's it's kind of it's what we liked about the Heath Ledger Joker, right? Is that he could be really funny and then he could shove a pencil through your eye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we love a charming villain. I mean, it's also what we love about like Lanfear and the Wheel of Time too. Right, right. We love we love one that one we can understand the motivations of, mm-hmm. and two is someone who's charming. And you know, friends to enemies. I'm sorry, enemy enemies to lovers. Rather, it, I mean, mm-hmm. book talk is all about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I, I will defend a certain pairing later in the timeline. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sequel trilogy for anyone who's wondering. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I We've was like, about hey, this. who are you referring to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps perhaps some some themes that we might think about. So, All right. uh, yeah. Shall we get into the climax of the episode after a quick break? Mm-hmm. All right. Be right back. Okay, so the carnage gets unleashed, and this is going to be a slightly longer recap of the action sequence, uh, but then and then followed by a longer lore dive into Chimera's fighting style and the Knights of Ren. So, all right, the master catches up with May, angry with her, but instead of killing her, cuts through her handcuffs. It seems though he might strike her then, but Jackie and Sol interrupt, attacking him. May uses the distraction to run again, and Darth Teeth chases after her, fending off the Jedi as he runs. Meanwhile, Osha hears baby girl May again through the Force, which makes her double down on wanting to go back. So after warning Yord not to do similar, she shines her flashlight at the rustling umber moths in the trees and tells Yord to run, both bait to lead the umber moths back to the Master. Back in the Master fight, Jackie has unmasked the Master, who was indeed Chimere all along. Darth Teeth is dead. Long live Darth Thirst. (laughs) But her victory is short-lived as he slips a shorter second lightsaber out of his main lightsaber, puncturing Jackie through the torso thrice in quick succession. Now unmasked, Chimere confronts May with the truth that he is the one she has been calling master. Sol takes advantage of this distraction to try to attack Chimere, who swerves and threatens May's life to hold Sol off, mocking him for aggressive, un-Jedi-like behavior. Saul drops his lightsaber and asks the stranger what he is. The stranger replies that he has no name before adding that the Jedi might call him a Sith and that all he wants is religious freedom and an acolyte. And since they've seen his face, he has to kill them all because the Jedi won't allow him to exist. Yord rushes into attack, but he's shocked to recognize Chimere, who takes advantage of his hesitancy to snap his neck. Osha gets May with a stun blast while Sol is back fighting Chimere. He nearly kills him before Osha stops him. Chimere tells Osha that Sol is hiding things from her. Tells Sol it's better to embrace his inner darkness than pretend it doesn't exist. And Sol steps away and puts his lightsaber away. Pip senses movement in the trees and Osha yanks off his head, which works as a flashlight, and tells Pip she loves him before fixing it to Chimere's back, attracting the Umber Moths who carry him with Pip's head away. So John, how are your soul suspicions doing after this episode? <laughs> uh I think he is someone who has like basically all Jedi even though they don't admit it, struggled with anger and fear and and ha- and and tried to deny it. And we we see later in the timeline that some Jedi try to deny that they have these emotions and tried to deny that they th- that they are tempted by the dark side Mm -hmm. and it doesn't help. Like that is part of the dark side is this denial. Is this, is this shoving things down? Uh, And, and that, you know, the denial of the dark side existing gives the dark side power over you. Right. There, there was one thing I wanted to bring up from night, sorry, from day, which is why I think it should have been one episode. Okay. And there was a part of the conversation when Chimera is walking with May and they're talking about the deals that they have with the master. Mm-hmm. And May says, well, it's not a deal. It's a lesson. And she says, what's your deal? And he goes, well, I don't have a deal per se. I just, you know, I owe, owe him. Mm-hmm. I owe him. I don't think he was lying there. I think he thinks he owes something to himself. 
Hmm. Maybe. And that's an interesting way to view that character, right? Like he has to keep fighting to do to restore something to himself. Yeah. Well, I also wonder about the other thing he said in that episode was that the master collects people. Mm. So who else is he collecting? Yeah, that's a good question. Also, I just want to know, because here's the thing. Sith, we know that Sith apprentices are incredibly insecure because the whole premise of the rule of two is one day they have to be strong enough to overthrow their master. And then mm-hmm. they're going to be alone and they very quickly need a new apprentice to avoid the extinction of the Sith. Mm-hmm. And so they get so insecure that they have these like, uh, this isn't an apprentice, it's a student. Right, you know, it's, it's an it's acolyte, like they, yeah. Yeah, they they play with uh, the wording. And yeah, and that's a point mm-hmm. people are making, like the way that he's using acolyte. He didn't say, yeah. Mm-hmm. And suggests that he's not, that, that he is the apprentice. Right. If, if he is part of the actual Sith and not just a smuggler right. playing Sith cosplay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and so as you mentioned at the end of the episode, we hear the Kylo Ren theme music playing. Um, so then that brings up something that I have to say people were speculating on since they saw his mask. And first of all, I have to call out a, uh, one of his funny one-liners is uh, Saul asks him, why do you risk discovery? And he says, well, I was wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a great line. I, I really yeah. enjoyed that one. But yeah, when people saw the mask in the in the trailers and you know the promotional material, people were already starting to ask questions about the Knights of Ren. And now with this Kylo Ren theme music, yeah. So anyone who doesn't know Kylo Ren is a dark side character who shows up much later in the timeline, and he takes the Ren part of his name from the Knights of Ren. And what we know about we don't really know the origins of the Knights of Ren. We just know that they they came out of the unknown regions. So again, that's the the region of space where chis space and other things are, but it's basically, it's a difficult to navigate region of space. Uh, so they came out of there as, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, sorry, I'm going to, okay. Okay. So just to quote Wikipedia on this, Darth Sidious stated in his book, Secrets of the Sith, that the Knights of Ren did not adhere to any code. They were willing to do anything to prevail as such, the knights lived a flexible lifestyle, doing whatever they pleased. They believed that everything they gained was given to them by the dark side. Yeah, this sounds kind of like what Chimera is saying this episode, doesn't it? You know, that he wants to be able to do whatever he pleases. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think that, I, first of all, I would love more exposition on the Knights of Ren. I think that that mm-hmm. is an underexplored piece of lore from later in the timeline. And clearly you could make it so that they have their origin over here. Right. Yeah, no, this could absolutely be the origin story of the Knights of Ren. And I also have to question the fact, so they they are originally a band of marauders from the unknown region. So does this, could it be, because who else is like crazy marauders taking people out or the Nihil? Could there, could it be that in The third phase of the High Republic books, which are not done yet, so we don't know how that story ends, uh, but we know the Nihil don't seem to be around after that for whatever reason. Could it be that a group of them go into the unknown regions to hide out and then reemerge later as the Knights of Ren? Oh, I don't know. I don't know enough about the Nihil right now. Yeah. That's the problem is I I only just started Light of the Jedi. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So you're you're going to very quickly get to know the Nihil, but they are the um, major antagonist in the... So there's three phases of the High Republic books, and in the second two, chronologically, the Nihil are the major antagonists. And they are basically... Yeah, they are super space pirates, is how I've been describing them. So I'm wondering if there's a tie there. Um, but it definitely sounds like Knights of Ren stuff. You know, the Knights of Ren are also known for these uh, masks, they shielded their features in battle because they thought that this would make them more intimidating, basically, mm-hmm. which this mask seems well, <laughs> well primed to do. Um, yeah, and they were led by a Wren, and, that, and the Wren was also their red lightsaber based religious philosophy. So they basically thought that only Force users were allowed to join the Knights of Wren. So this is sort of like the opposite of the Path of the Open Hand in a way. Mm hmm. And only those who could access the dark side, which they called the shadow, 
Huh. And um, interesting thing, we may or may not see playing out if this is a Knights of Ren tie, which they really seem to be implying. Um, so membership to join the Knights of Ren, you had to do a ritual sacrifice. So you had to either kill someone uh, like a member of your family or someone you loved. It's something like okay. that. Something to sort of, yeah, to give up everything you love and you are now with this nihilist, um, anarchist mentality, marauding the universe and taking what you want. So is the point of keeping Osha alive to have May, you know, kill her? Maybe, or maybe now he's thinking the opposite. Oh, all right. Go get, go get my old apprentice, my old accolade. I'm so sorry. Right. I won't, I won't insult <laughs> you. Yeah, maybe. I'm wondering that. Um, cool dual lightsaber stuff. So we, we got first Jackie, who, yeah, it was cool. I was glad that she figured that out because usually you have to be trained. It's actually the so lights, dual lightsaber wielding, something we see uh, in general throughout the timeline. And it's the fighting style is called Jarkai. Oh, you know, it's, it's funny. There was a joke that I heard on... A more civilized age, which is another Star Wars podcast, mm -hmm. where somebody said, "Have we ever seen somebody who usually wields one lightsaber wield two and get weaker or more clumsy? Because it seems like there's no downside to having two lightsabers." <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess oh, you do have to train. We do see, um, we do see Ahsoka later. She trains, so Ahsoka as a character pops up uh, later in the timeline, and she goes through several different phases of lightsaber usage for various reasons. Uh, but probably her most iconic one is that she has two lightsabers, but like Darth Teeth, one of them is a shorter blade, what they call mm -hmm. a Shoto blade or a light dagger. And the idea is that this is like a more aggressive fighting style that gives you better control. And also you can, of course, use it as defense too, the extra saber. Yeah, I, I've always really enjoyed Ahsoka's fighting style because it's it's the way she holds the lightsabers most of the time. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that sometimes she holds them where she goes top down, but a lot of the time she's she's doing underhand lightsaber strikes. Right. Which are very cool to me. So you don't normally see that. But I will say uh, Anakin, we even see, use dual lightsabers in a certain fight. And he just gets stronger when he picks up a second right. lightsaber. That's, but that's so Anakin. Like, yeah. Is there, a, dark, <laughs> is there a, a downside to using two yeah. lightsabers? But I don't think everyone should be able to do what Anakin does. Yeah, but Jackie, Jackie does it. But, you know, Jackie's so capable that it didn't, like, ring untrue. It wasn't like, you know, the character we're mad about force pulling a lightsaber <laughs> in another right. show. Also, I think Jackie had a fatal misstep in this, which is she should have held up the second lightsaber to his chest and then lit it instead of mm. lighting it, bringing his attention to it and then trying to attack him. with it. Right. Well, that's basically kind of how he did it with her. Right. That's my point is, is yeah. like, is she he was surprised. She her. was yeah. too out in the open with it. Mm -hmm. She did not surprise him with it. Her, her timing was off. Yeah. Well, I think that's also maybe a thing about, you know, the light side, dark side is the dark side mm -hmm. is, are more covert and sometimes that gains them the advantage just because they have the element of uh, surprise because they're willing to fight a little dirty. Yeah. And this is a conversation that we've been having on the house of the dragon feed, which is, is it, and it's basically a trolley problem is, is it more moral to play by the rules and allow more people to die? Or is it more moral to uh, kill one person intentionally hmm. to save thousands? Right. Exactly. And this is something we see the Jedi Council struggle with later, too. Yeah. You know what I struggled is uh, the one time I really got mad at Chimere was when I, I was mad at him for killing them. But, you know, from his perspective, but then he said, Jackie, was that its name? <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> How oh. dare you, sir? Yeah, yeah. And then he makes a good point. Saul says she she was a child. And he's like, well, you brought her here. Oh, the Jedi are big on child soldiers. And they mm -hmm. don't like when you point that out. But they, are, mm -hmm. they absolutely are big on child soldiers. Yeah, like how dare you point to the teenager that I brought into battle and say like, that what? I brought a teenager into battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. it's They are just not. They're not doing a great job there. Yeah. They're not doing a great job in stating their moral case. No, I mean, we don't mean to. It's just 
because the Jedi are painted as, you know, the all lights, white hats, whatever of the Star Wars universe for so long, it's just I think it's dangerous for us to look at any group because we also do this in the real world where we're like, oh, well, they're always right. And anytime you look more closely at especially a big and established group, there's going to be questionable aspects of it. And and if you're not questioning that, then, um, yeah, you're going to let rot fester, and which is exactly what the Sith are trying to do. Right. Right. Mm. So I have one more fun lightsaber fact about the Shoto, the shorter sword. Uh, Yoda wields a Shoto because he's a widow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Full boy. lightsaber would be too big for him. That's interesting. I, does Yaddle do the same thing? I guess so. Yeah, I'm having trouble picture. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I, I, is, hers, yeah, yeah. is hers longer than Yoda's? I don't know. I, I, I love this. There's some Yaddle POV earlier in the High Republic. and. First of all, I love that because Yettle's an underserved character. Mm-hmm. But there's a really funny moment where she's like, she was comforting her pat her her youngling apprentice. It wasn't even a Padawan. Uh, she was she was comforting her her youngling apprentice, which was odd because she was taller than her. You know, she was like cradling yeah. her. And she's <laughs> oh. like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Yaddle, anyone who doesn't know Yaddle, is a female of Yoda species. I talk about them in depth in the Young Jedi Adventures episode in the Star Wars Canon Timeline podcast uh, feed, if anyone wants more on their species. Um, yeah. Darth Zana. Okay. Right? Isn't it? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, but probably. You know more <laughs> than me about Star Wars, so I just defer to you. But but yeah, Bane tried to do it, failed, and then got stuck in the head, like in torture, it sounded like. Like he just he just had to like be at the back of her mind for the rest of his life, for the rest of her life. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I wonder if there's something like that at play here. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. I want. I will agree with him to the extent I agree with Darth Teeth or Darth Thirst or Chimera, whatever we're calling him, um, to the extent that like he should be free to practice his religion in the way that I agree with Mother Anasea, they should be free to practice their religion. But when your religion involves murder, mm-hmm. um, yeah, where do we draw this line? <laughs> I right, feel like we right, draw exactly. it on this side of murder. <laughs> It's, I mean, we literally have this debate in the United States, right? Mm-hmm. Because because we have religions that include, you, you know, the question is, if your religion includes animal sacrifice, mm. do we allow that? But people eat meat, so yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, well, I, I think the question is like, if if it causes pain, like there are right. regulations. No, then, and, yeah. And I yeah. don't. I don't think that they really do a lot, but there are regulations for the treatment of animals mm-hmm. uh, that are going to be, you know, made into meat. But that you know, doing a ritual killing is that is that the same thing? Whatnot? Um, you know, there's uh, even preparing meat for kosher or halal consumption, which but which mm-hmm. by the way, I'm not saying that's less ethical. In fact, in a lot of ways, studies have shown that it's more ethical to kill animals the way that they do. I'm not getting into a debate on. Yeah. I'm on, a vegetarian, uh, so I'm staying out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my point is, my point mm-hmm. is, it is a legitimate debate of like, how far do we let you go with your, with under the claim of I'm practicing my religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. If we Where's, wouldn't accept it otherwise. Where do you draw the line? And you're killing the members of my religion is generally considered <laughs> right. a good place right. to draw it. Yeah. 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 For sure. But then again, yeah, did the Jedi start it by, as May said at this episode, invading the coven? Oh, do I have to sing it again? <laughs> May didn't start the fire. Also, I'll say, if you're a Patreon or Supercast member of the Lorehounds, I'm going to be debuting my Hot Lore Summer song on Second Breakfast this month. It is eight minutes long, and I'll tell you the first verse of it is about the Acolyte. Nice. <laughs> Very exciting stuff. I also have a question about um, Osha hearing May's voice. We still have not seen May experience any of this Force deity stuff. Hmm. Only Osha. But May can use the Force and Osha can't. Although, obviously, Osha used to be able to if she was a Jedi. But I just find it interesting. Osha seems to be the only one getting these Force visions about May. Well, May talks a lot about blocking, right? So Mm. I wonder if she can block out Osha 
because she's created a wall around her. Right. Whereas Osha is just vulnerable. Uh, you know, it, I think it also has to do with like the opposite philosophies of Jedi and Sith, right? Which is is that the the Jedi are very open to the thoughts of others and open to other ideas, mm-hmm. ostensibly, right? And and that and fear and doubt those are weaknesses if you use the light side. Whereas fear, anger, pain, those are things that strengthen are you if you use the dark yeah. side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just wonder if somebody is messing with Osha's head. What if it's not really May she's seeing, but somebody pretending to be May? Mm, I could see that, and I would like that. It's Mother Coral. Well, maybe. I still, where was she in the flashback? <laughs> she wasn't in the bodies pile. Yep. But speaking of the sisters, um, time for the Padawan trap. So Osha questions Sol about what Chimere said about not being able to trust him. And Sol promises he'll tell her everything, but is stunned immediately by May. As the sun begins to dawn on this long night, Osha confronts May. May believes she was avenging her family, but Osha still blames May for the loss of that family. Each thinks that the other has been brainwashed and that the other follows a false master. May begs Osha to choose her over the Jedi, but just as when they were children, Osha does not. She attempts to arrest May, but May is a stronger fighter and knocks her sister out, reminding us Osha has never been good at defense. <laughs> she uses a yellow lightsaber to cut her hair to match her sister's and then puts on her clothing, pretending to be Osha as she as she walks back to Sol, who has just woken up. They retreat hastily to the ship, not even taking the bodies of the fallen. And Darth Thirst, who has freed himself from the umber moths, finds the unconscious Osha the wrong tattoo. He force heals her and then picks her up and takes her with him. And Basil finally reappears, collecting Pip's head where it had been discarded on the ground and returning to the ship, sniffing after May. Yeah, I know everyone thinks Osha's the good one, and it's true that May clings to her, but like, I think Osha was being pretty dickish to May in this section. And in general, actually, I think it's one thing to be like, I want to live my own life. It's another thing. She's kind of awful to May a lot of the time. All right, but at the same time, May just literally killed people she loves yeah but even back when they were children when yeah may was clinging too hard and osha should be allowed to live her own life this is true but osha didn't have to be so mean to her about it right right yeah i i see what you're saying there but but if i'm gonna defend osha here it did seem like this was a long-standing tradition and ramping up the stress of a child having to commit to a lifelong practice I think it's perfectly fair for her to have snapped there. Right yeah, before the no, I mean, I, yeah. And now it's different, you know, but, but at the same time, again, she just, she's killed multiple people you love and she just stunned the one you looked up to the most. Mm-hmm. I'll see how long that lasts. I just, I just think the anger is justified here. Yeah, I mean, I think the anger is justified, but also, I don't know. I just think we might be, people should be prepared that Osha might be about to take a tumble to the dark side. Yeah, I mean, we we know she couldn't escape her her trauma, mm-hmm. and trauma is something that the dark side just it, they just love it there. You know, they yeah. just love love trauma. I mean, Bane had such an abusive childhood, and that's what fueled him to become, mm-hmm. you know, so powerful on the dark side. Is he just had so much pain, which is so sad. Right. But uh, yeah, and, I, I mean, we talked about Darth Sion in the Knights of the Old Republic episode, and. Um, Yeah, that's just basically a man held together by pain. He only exists because pain keeps him alive. Right. And and plenty of other characters have a similar story. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I I think, though, I do think Saul, as we said earlier, knows that they're switched. uh, And I have to wonder how long she thinks she's going to. She might. I don't know if she clocked that her sister has a tattoo on her shoulder. She certainly it was revealed when she took off her clothing. But I. How long can she keep that spiral on her forehead concealed? Mm, good question. Good question. Uh, I don't think it's concealed at all, quite honestly. I think no. that he knows. I think he knows. But I think Basil's going to be the one, like I said, to call it out because he's sniffing at her and he found that pip head. They did go out of their way, though, to say how rare it is for somebody to know Basil's language. Yes, exactly. So he has no one left to talk to without Yord. Yeah. Yeah, that's very sad. They're going to need a protocol droid soon. Yeah, ooh. 
No, we're not getting a C-3PO. <laughs> no, we're not. But, but I, I, you know, there's other droids that do yeah, there that. There are other droids, <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's not the only one, as much as it feels like it sometimes. Um, yeah, I, and the last quote that we get is, he says, what extraordinary beings, uh, the Chimera says, what extraordinary beings we are. Even in the revelation of our triumph, you see the depths of our despair. So I guess the triumph is defeating that gaggle of Jedi? Yeah, I guess so. And despair is losing May? Yeah. Uh, maybe losing his mask. I think he's more upset about the mask than May. He has the pieces. He he can repair it, probably. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's unusual to see a... He heals Osha, and it's unusual to see a non-reformed Darksider force healing. So... That's interesting. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the question is, does he only use the dark side or is he not quite all Sith? Yeah. Also, I guess is... the Sith don't say you can't use the light side, right? Like they still lift things and throw them. Right. Yeah. I, no, I, I, think... Th I think you can still use the light side. It's just that they don't fear using the dark side. Right. And I guess they tend more toward the dark side because, well, I think it's more the way that they approach the force, you know, in terms of mm -hmm. so the light side, they're more like um, you have to channel the force and the dark side is you have to harness it and bend it to your will. Yeah, it's very similar to the Wheel of Time. The way that right. the male side of, of the one power of Sidene works is you have to try to dominate it, basically. Mm -hmm. And then the, the female side of the force, which, by the way, this is all very problematic and Robert Jordan. Should right. Not no, it way. should be but, gendered like that. But there's two sides of that force too <laughs> right one right power. and but yeah. but you submit <laughs> to the mm -hmm. female side of the of the one power right uh, in, in this i you know open yourself we have the light up. side and the dark yeah. side is one uh -huh. you submit to the other you uh and actually i don't know if submit is the right word in star wars i don't think that the jedi necessarily say they submit no. to the force but they but they channel they it. feel like they're partners with the force i mm -hmm. think right yeah whereas the sith are are bending it so it's interesting if the um, if the Knights of Ren are evolved out of the Nile, which are evolved out of the path of the open hand, then then I mean, of course, there'll be other splinter groups out there with different thoughts. But then you go from having, you know, you cannot touch the force to only force users can be dark side force users can be with us. Mm hmm. Yeah. What, what do you think might happen next? Oh, I think we're probably, I, I think you're right. You suggested this earlier. I think we're going to have two sides of this story being told from yeah. different perspectives. I think that's the next thing that's going to happen. After that, no, no idea. And that's an exciting place to be. You know, we right. know a little bit of what might happen next, but we don't know nearly enough to predict the full next episode. Well, I think, yeah, we're going to, we know... We know we need certain other perspectives. Like we know we're going to get Chimere's perspective at some point. We know we're going to get the Jedi perspective of what happened on Brendock at some point. But we don't know what those perspectives are going to contain, really. You know what's funny is Kaleidoscope was like a show that was supposed to be all these different perspectives on the same heist. And that was going to be so cool. And I'm like, this is doing that so much better. And that's not yeah. even part of the pitch <laughs> of the show. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You could watch these, uh, a lot, not all these episodes in different order, but you could watch like the flashback. Right. That would be interesting. You get reveals in different, uh, different you orders. You know, I was on, I was on Wikipedia last night because I was trying to just see the, the timeline of canon media. And it's interesting that they, they did actually put it in episode three is placed in the timeline before the rest of the episodes. Right. 16 years earlier. Yeah. Pretty yep. interesting. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to dive into a little trailer-based speculation, just very short. I'll put the timestamps in the notes if anyone wants to see that or just push forward a couple times, but here we go. Um, so we there was a TV spot that showed someone, either Osha or May, I'm thinking it was Osha, picking up a lightsaber on what looks like the beach where we first saw May talk to Darth Teeth in the first episode. Mm -hmm. I, so, I think um, probably he'll end up threatening her and being like, I'll just kill you if you don't train a little bit and so she's like all right i guess i'll play along for a minute i think he might use honey instead and just be like listen i'll, I'll tell you the truth that saul won't tell you and, and manipulate her that way yeah although uh, at least Saul did say i will tell you when we get back to the ship so she knows that he wasn't gonna hide it forever yeah but then again he had how many years of opportunities to tell her 
Mm -hmm. and never did. And that's that's damning in itself. Right. Right. Yep. And we also we we still need Vernestra to show up with her light whip. So I guess I thought it might be in this episode because it looks like she was in a forest. But I guess it's a different forest or we come back here or something like that. Yeah. It might still be in the past on Brendock, actually, that right. forest. Um, well, I don't know because she seemed to not. I don't think she knows what happened on Brendock. I think she knows something was hush hush about it, but she doesn't know what. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if that's going to be like a finale thing. At first, I thought maybe the next episode, because of the mirror image thing, would be the uh, another flashback to Brendock. But now I'm thinking next episode, they have to give us Kaimeo's perspective and then the flashback to Brendock again. Yeah, I would be dissatisfied if we jumped away from the timeline again. Hmm. I don't know that I'd be dissatisfied, trajectory. but it feels like... I, I mean, right away. Yeah. It feels like they yeah, need to at least show us where Osha's going or, you know, and, and play out the whole May pretending to be Osha thing. Yeah. Well, should we see what community members thought about this episode? Absolutely. So if you have thoughts that you want to send in, then please do email us. We have two different podcasts here, so two different emails. There's SWTimelinePodcast at gmail.com and Star Wars at thelorehounds.com. And the first one, it's it's a little baby feedback because it's uh, it, I was tagged by Athena Angelea on the Discord, and she said, I would love some context on Je Jedi funerary practices at this point, if we know it. And this is in response to, what did you think about Saul uh, leaving behind the bodies of Jackie and, and Yord? And yeah, I, again, I think that Saul knows who he's with, and so is, is going to play a role until I think he's very focused on how he survives the next few minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing is I kind of feel like that's not a master's job. Like I think he's, he's going to be like, all right, I'm going to call the cleanup crew. <laughs> and, right. And the Padawans will come and carry the bodies, which is pretty dark, but yeah, I, I, I don't know if, uh, also Jedi master soul just went through a really hard fight and got knocked out. I think he, mm -hmm. Probably needs a break before he does some lifting. Maybe he's he just going back dazed. to the ship to recover, not even to yeah. run away yet. He did look dazed. And it's true. We might see them start to um, have like a funeral for them in the episodes to come. Yeah. I mean, we we brush off stun blasts in mm -hmm. Star Wars. But, you know, when whenever you see a character talk about it afterwards in a book or, or a, a POV of a, a TV show or something, they're always like, man, I still feel out of it from getting stunned. Yeah, you know, it's it's it is like it knocks you out. Like imagine just being knocked out and then waking up. You wouldn't be your right self right away. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a very good point. Um, but since Athena asked about funerals, I mean, we, we do see some funerals in the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy. And um, we've seen two things happen in general. The Jedi, at least so. All that other stuff is a hundred or so later year, years later in the timeline. So could be different now, but from what we've seen from later in the timeline, they have funeral pyre, pyres for fallen Jedi. Mm -hmm. And um, we've also seen bodies that just disappear into the force, but that seems to be related to a skill the Jedi haven't yet relearned, which is uh, the force ghosts. Um, so that's probably why, yeah, one reason why Je Jeky and Yord and the others didn't dissipate, Jay. but also, you know, Yord wasn't strong enough in the Force for that, and Jeky was too young. Right, right. Yeah, and, and it, I think it's explicitly said in one of the books, like, oh, it's just a myth that people can manifest through the cosmic Force. Right. Well, every myth is based in fact in Star Wars. <laughs> all right, all right. That's that's. Um, uh, have you been watching Supernatural? I feel like that's like the main premise of that show. Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I watched it while I was on. I watched the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't finish it. I I, I watched. I think through episodes through season like seven or eight, something like that. Okay. Which which yeah. seems insane to say that that's not the whole right. show, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a show that had you know it, there were stronger seasons and there were weaker seasons. I stuck it through until yeah. the end, and I'm glad I did. It had a satisfying ending. Yeah, seasons one through five were like perfect, and then. Mm -hmm. It, it went a little bit downhill after that, but for a well, while. Well, I mean, yeah, it's some some episodes, yeah, some seasons are better than others. So I did, I did read how it ended because I was like, I just don't have time to go back through the whole okay. thing. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, and it seemed like it did end on a satisfying note. So I think if you even just watched like the last, I don't know, two episodes maybe was where they set it off and pay it off. Uh, it set it up and paid off. But anyway, yeah. Did they carry on their way with wayward son? I I mean, that song was definitely employed in different varieties, <laughs> <laughs> very different variations. Covered. Uh, all right. Um, do you want to read Rocky Zim's? Sure. Rocky Zim wrote in and said, hello. Hello, Rocky Zim. Hello there. So I enjoyed this episode and I'm enjoying the show. I think the show is pretty good. It has a lot of new characters and we are seeing the Jedi discover a Sith Lord for the first time in a while. The fight scenes at the beginning were really good. I liked how Darth Jason used the Force to pull, uh, sorry, the Force pull to add another Jedi victim right. to his lightsaber and had a two for one. <laughs> I loved how he was able to break the lightsabers with his helmet and his armor, at least disable them for a few minutes or so. He was pretty powerful. Part of me is thinking that even though Chimere is the masked man, there is another Sith behind the scenes, and that could be Coral. I, I, pausing there, agreed. I think we pretty much hashed that out already. Yeah. I was sad to see Jackie and Yor die. Jackie. Uh, <laughs> I almost a Game of Thrones vibe with the killing of some main characters in early episodes. When Jackie had two lightsabers, I was so pumped, and it was a great fight. Agreed. Agreed. It was interesting to see May disguise herself as Osha to follow Soul. It is hard to believe that Soul would not know of the switch. I'm hoping he is playing along and it will lead to May changing her view of how things are. Also, I am excited to see what Chimere does with Osha. He has to know it is not May because of the shorter hair and the present and her presence in the force. I'm enjoying the show. Some people are unsure of where this is going. I think one main theme is looking at the Jedi's faults and conflicts regarding their laws and belief. Taking children, attacking a defenseless person, the whole attachment thing, Sol and Osha, a father-daughter vibe, uh, and so on. And restrictions on using the Force. Kaimir says that he wants to be free to use the Force the way he wants and doesn't want to be restricted. Now there are good and bad ways to use the Force. But the Jedi have certain rules that can be restrictive in desperate times. Also, we need to figure out what happened to May and Osha's family of witches and how Soul was involved. Plenty of things to uncover, and I'm sure there are things that I missed and upcoming. Keep up the good work, Dave. Rocky Zim. This is the first time I've known Rocky Zim's name. Yeah. This is very exciting. Well, thanks, Dave. We re reached a new relationship. <laughs> Wait, we leveled up. We, yeah. It, the uh the the force bond has grown. <laughs> um yeah, no, I I strongly agree with pretty much everything in that email. So the last one um I'll let you read it but just to set it up. Uh, so Marilyn asked previously about Yoruba uh practices of witchcraft and how that might have any similarities to what we've seen in the acolyte with the coven we saw there. And um so I responded I asked a Nigerian friend and she was like, "Hmm, not really seeing anything, but she went and asked another friend of hers who knows more about this specific subject. And so this is what her friend said. As seen in the clip, powers were being passed from a high-ranking witch to young ones. Transfer of power also exists in Yoruba witchcraft. I actually believe witchcraft is the same, irrespective of continent and race. It's just the names of the deities and gods that differ. However, there are some similarities. Then I went on to ask her about uh, sorry, you, Alicia. No, so you, then, yeah, so then my friend, her royal bubbly list, or Precious, okay. when asked her friend, she sent her friend a clip, basically, and said, like, what do you think, uh, do you, what similarities do you see in this clip of the witches and Yoruba practices? Okay, so the answer was, costume and music differ because of difference in culture. The similarities are in what gods and deities represent. For instance, when we say Osun is the goddess of fertility in Yoruba land, there are goddesses of fertility in other countries slash cultures. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So, the, so there are some parallels, but it's similar to the parallels we see between witchcraft practices throughout the real world. Right. Yeah. I guess the biggest thing is the handing down, um, you know, between generations, but that can't be unusual either. The power of many. many. Do you know, I, I saw my wife sent me a TikTok where somebody was like, this is the most cringe scene with the power of many thing. And I was like, I totally disagree. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I don't know, no, I I don't know why people are hating on that. 
No, I don't know. I mean, there's something recently where people act like they're allergic whenever anything mu- remotely musical gets involved. Yeah. Well, you know me and Doctor Who. There, there are yeah. certain things I like and certain things I don't like. <laughs> you and Simon didn't like the twist. Oh, I like the twist. Oh, you like the twist? Okay. I did so like, the twist. like the twist. I did not okay. like the goblin songs. Oh, I liked the goblin song. <laughs> I was just anyway. like, stop that. I think <laughs> I think I was extra sensitive because it was the first episode where Disney was involved. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. no. Well, that was how I felt about Space Babies, the yeah. first real. So but anyway, sorry, that's Doctor Who stuff. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're enjoying Star Wars, you can mm-hmm. join us in other space adventures. We did the yes. whole season, the first season of the new 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 Who. Check it out. On the we Lord even have a feed. special uh, special feed for that. The Sonic Screwcast. Yeah, which is a dumb name. I. You know, one I of my love talents, that name. One of my talents is coming up with dumb names. And, <laughs> I like and it. And I, I like to lean into it. Although I think you you decided to name it Screwcast when I tried to do the Sonic podcast. And you were like, no, do Screwcast. What's it? I don't know. Is it me? I'm going to give you know. credit for it anyway. Okay. <laughs> well, shall we? Okay. Shall we uh, wrap it up with what's going on in the network? Um First on the canon, uh, the Star Wars canon timeline podcast, of course, we will be continuing with three more weeks of Acolyte coverage. And also this week, there's actually going to be a second episode in that feed. I'm going to be covering, I managed to get my hands on uh, this hard to find edition of a book, which has a couple of uh, canon ancient myths of the planet Batu. So I'm going to put out a special episode just summarizing them, talking about uh, how they relate to the broader Star Wars narrative. Um, nice. And of, yeah. And of course, last week, as we mentioned, we had that mid-season subscriber chat, which is on both the Lorehounds feeds, uh, uh, subscriber feeds, and the Canon Padawan Supercast, uh, where you can get everything, of, as always, early and ad-free. And on Wool Shift Dust, I released recently an interview with uh, Glenn Matsara, who he was a co-showrunner of Beacon 23, but also a showrunner of big shows like Walking Dead and Damien. So we talked about showrunning in, in general, in addition to the show. And um, this week, there'll be a book club episode coming out for Will Shift Dust on the second part of the book shift called, conveniently, Second Shift. And mm. on the, we're, we're busy in the Lorehounds feed too. We're just uh, tomorrow as we're recording this, or no, today as we're recording this, I guess it just came out. The MC Universe Fox Marvel Funeral episode just came out. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a funny name. And and boy, it, it had its ups and downs, didn't it? I, I haven't listened yet. I was waiting for it to come out on public. Also, I've just been busy and I'm, I'm still supposed to watch The Bear before I record tonight. So oh yeah, uh, at least one episode. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to hearing you know, all your thoughts on that. And I want to hear Jean's thoughts on X-Men 97 too. Yeah. And he also uh, gives some X-Men comic recs and we uh, talk about Marvel news and stuff. So nice. yeah, just getting you ready for Deadpool and Wolverine next month. And of course, you and I did the Doctor Who finale recently. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I, I am a big fan of this season of Doctor Who. I think they did a great job and they wrapped it up pretty well. As Doctor Who usually does. <laughs> yeah. But also, yeah, it's it's got me excited for next season because there are definitely some questions I need answered. Right. And don't forget, we're doing House of the Dragon. Yes. I was going to ask you, what else is going on in the Lorehounds Network? House of the Dragon, season two, episode two, Rhaenyra the Cruel, is out now. It's like a two and a half hour breakdown. It's nice and meaty. Uh, we also did a quick reaction right after the episode for patrons, which was a lot of fun. Uh, I think we're going to try to do that every week. I don't know if we always can. I know David's doing some traveling, but we're going to try to do that every week. Uh, we also are doing second breakfast this week with a hotel breakfast. Like I said, there's going to be a song that, uh, begins with the acolyte. So very exciting. Uh, we next week we'll be doing 11 Z's with the fifth element, which I have on my queue. It's on Hulu. So you can watch it there. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't have Hulu, but... Uh, oh, it's on Hulu in the U.S. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I just did a Shire Side Chats episode, too, for subscribers. Oh, yeah, I just listened to that. That was good. Oh, thank you. I, it, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was an easy one to prep because I was able to copy-paste some stuff from the Second Age. Hmm. Uh, and then Rings and Rituals finished up this, the coverage of Season 1 of the Rings of Power this week. So they did Chapter 8, Alloyed, 
next week or two weeks from now, um, I will be on the the feed over there talking about the music of Rings of Power with Marilyn. So definitely stay tuned for that. Cool. Uh, the Radioactive Ramblings is doing The Boys. Season four, episode four is coming out this week and uh, very exciting stuff. The Boys season four is going really strong. Yeah. It took me, I thought episode two was a slow one. And I guess I understand why they dropped three in that regard. Although Amazon mm-hmm. just seems to like to do that. Three was too much. But now I'm, I'm totally, and I, I, uh, my favorite new, my favorite character in the show overall right now is Sister Sage, who's a new one. Oh, or she's I should call great. her Sage. She doesn't, <laughs> it was Vaughn <laughs> who added the sister part. Right, right, right. Uh, and uh, properly Howard. I just want to mention them quick. They finished up their season with Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. Yeah, what happened to Rocky? They just I don't know. You know, it, it, there was a message that Anthony posted that made me laugh in the properly Howard channel on the Discord last night. Let me pull it up. It says, <laughs> uh, "The Last Dragon is indeed the last pot of the season. Is it a crime and a fraud committed against our listeners to have dropped Rocky from the season? You be the judge." <laughs> <laughs> Well, the season went about crimes and fraud. (laughs) Exactly. Felonies and fugazis. Yeah. Well, that's all we got on the Lorehounds Network, but but thanks everyone for tuning in. Yeah. As if that's not enough. Oh, and the um, the bear just came out, so it's going to be a reaction. Well, that's going to be a a Patreon and Supercast exclusive reaction. Okay, reaction. And then a one shot later. Yeah, yeah. We'll do a one shot on the full season later, but I think Dave yeah. and I are gonna do like a quick reaction pod on episode one just to have it out. Okay. And and there's also we're wrapping up one more episode of Interview with the Vampire, which was just renewed for season three. Um Ooh. so but yeah, so if anyone has any feedback about uh the season or interview with the vampire in general, please send it to Lorehounds at the Lorehounds.com. Very nice. Very exciting. Shall, Shall we think? I? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, please. Oh, no, you go. You go. Oh, you no. thank them. Oh, 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 after you. <laughs> <laughs> We're very polite. Stripping over each other to thank people. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll do this real quick. Uh, we do our thank yous every episode of the Lorehounds feed. Uh, our Discord server boosters are Narls, Aaron K, Tiller the Thriller, Dork of the Ninjas, Do 71, Captain Jinji 56, Athena A. And then our Patreon and Supercast lore masters are some Martian, Michael G, Michelle E, David W, Brian P, SC, Peter OH, Bettina W, Adam S, Nancy M, Doof71, Brian 8063, Frederick H, Sarah L, Gareth C, Eric F, Matthew M, Sarah M, DJ Miwa, Andra B, Kwang Yu, Dead Eye Jedi Bob, Nathan T, Alex V, Aaron T, Sub Zero, Aaron K, Dally V, Mothership Sixty One, Narls, Kathy W, Stuart B, and Adrian. Adrian, how are we supposed to pronounce your name? <laughs> Send us a voicemail. Because I feel I feel like I've heard three people say it three different ways, and now I just need to know. I mean, I think it's just what degree are you on the scale of English to Spanish? Where we lean? Where are you leaning personally with your? But there's an accent. Uh, yeah, Adrian. Adrian. You know, I, I I just think I I I'm just <laughs> all right. Right in. All right, everyone. At all least right, it's your podcast. You. you should close it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all so much for uh, listening. And yeah, we I, thank you again, Annie, for your feedback. And we definitely want to hear from more people on with that kind of feedback uh, to let us know where you think we're on the lore scale, but also just, yeah, what, what do you think of the show? What do you want to know more about? Let us know. We look forward to talking to you more again about the Acolyte next week. Bye. Bye. The Lorehounds podcast is produced and published by The Lorehounds. You can send questions and feedback and voicemails at thelorehounds.com slash contact. Get early and ad-free access to all Lorehounds podcasts at patreon.com slash thelorehounds. And connect with us on Twitter at The Lorehounds. Any opinions stated are ours personally and do not reflect the opinion of or belong to any employers or other entities. Thanks for listening. This summer, 
we enter a new era of Star Wars. You mean the dawn of the Star Wars canon timeline podcast? Yeah, yeah, sure, that too. But I was obviously talking about the Acolyte. We've got to cover that on the Lorehounds. Oh, but the Star Wars Canon Timeline podcast is exactly at that point in the timeline, the end of the High Republic, 100 years before the prequel trilogy. We've got to cover it there. Why not both? Okay, deal. It's the first live action Star Wars outside the Skywalker saga. Nobody can miss this. Listeners, kick off your hot lore summer weekends with scene by scene breakdowns of the Acolyte, found in both the Star Wars Canon Timeline podcast and the Lorehound's mother feed. And the Lorehound Star Wars feed. Wherever you like to listen, a couple of days after each new episode is released. Mm-hmm.